Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and today we've ventured all the way out of the safety of Kent to the danger of Essex, to this White Webs Museum, to the Rover Sports Register Icebreaker Show, which is generally the first Rover meetup of the year and toured the icebreaker because generally it's absolutely freezing, but today it's quite nice and there's some very interesting nice cars have turned up as well. Let's take a little look around. Well, obviously the first car we've got here is the good old trusty coupe which made it all the way here, only spilling some oil down the motorway. The only one here, the only R8 here in the car park as well today. I've got a few of the modern ones here as well. Nice 75, this is named on its own badge just here. Interiors and these are oh, so, so nice. Automatic. 2002, very nice. We're gonna call this a, a Rover, sort of, as a kind of freight Rover based LDVs. Not a Rover. This is what many people call the last Rover. Oh no, though, lots of good Rovers after it. P4, 110, very, very lovely indeed. Look at that wonderful interior. That dashboard is amazing. We need to drive one of these very soon indeed. This is one of the last Rovers, really. Well, not quite the last, the last generation though. A 25, 200 based, so sort of R8 based. As gold as they come. Not many other cars can pull off gold in the early noughties. And another P4. This one is a 95, so inferior in some ways to the 110, but not really. They're all rather, rather nice. This one apparently is very, very original according to the owner. Again, lovely interior. No radio in this one. The period radio was a very nice touch in the 110. Then we have some interlopers. What are these guys doing here? Is this a Buick? 39 Ford Deluxe. Lovely waterfall dashboard, not dashboard, radiator. That is very cool indeed. These guys live near... Oh, it's a Pontiac, not a Buick. What was I talking about? Of course it's a Pontiac. Check out that grill. This is a favorite of hot rodders and these ones have been slammed pretty heavily. Great looking cars. That flowing design just lends itself to lead sled so much. Beautiful things. Absolutely gorgeous. And these are the interiors that British cars were kind of copying into the 60s after the 30s and 40s in America. The Ford interior isn't quite as grand, but then it was a, a slightly cheaper car, despite being a deluxe. Now, the good stuff, P6s. This one is a V8, of course. SD1 alloys on it, it's a popular accessory to do this. Such good cars, I must get mine on the road again. This car we've seen before at this show. I did ask exactly what it was last time and I've forgotten again, which is bad of me. That's a Rover 12, of course it is. It says so on the badge. These 1930s cars, this is another one, this is a 16, which is the uh, bigger version. Are absolutely beautiful. The gear change on these cars is like nothing else. It is a buttered rifle bolt going through, I don't know, something very accurate. They're just very, very nice indeed. Beautiful, beautiful cars. One of Britain's fine cars. Now we have actually four more P6s. So P6s do seem to be one of the most popular car here at the show today. We've got a whole bunch of them over there as well. This is a 35S, again with SD1 alloys on it, S being the manual version. The four speed is a desirable option, but they are quite uh, twelve fragile, but you can put, well people did put SD1 gearboxes in these until SD1's got rarer than P6's. Then we have an early Series 1 2000. Notable for the fact it's got the battery in the front of the car rather than the boot, among other things. Is this Wedgwood? It might be Wedgwood. It'll say just here. Oh no, it's missing its sticker. 
Oh, it's got an ice alert. This car's got ice alert on the front. The cold weather warning, so you know if you might fall off the road. And original CB fog lamps. This is a lovely, lovely car. Oh, it's even got the rare early lower valance. We're in proper nerd land here. Mm -hmm. Listen to how whisper quiet that thing is. Poor man's Rolls Royce and all that. Lovely. But well, I've just spoken to the owner. It is a 1964 and it is a Wedgwood Blue. It's also in daily use, which is absolutely amazing and, and fantastic as well. So great to see it here, great to see it on the road. Another 2000, this is also a Series 1, but a TC, a 2000 TC. It's when the power started rising up a bit. And also obviously you've got the early badge, the early grill, and uh, the light, later Lucas fog lamps on this one. A bit of tobacco leaf. Another P6, another V8, brown this time. A brown V8. <laughs> now, brown has come back into fashion. For a long time, this is the most unfashionable colour in the world, but apparently the most rust proof because that's what you see most of. Lovely things. And then we have the P5. This is another of the last of the greatest real rovers, you know, etc. etc. This one being a three litre, the straight six. Beautiful, beautiful cars, wonderfully engineered. This is Rover's take on a sports coupe in the 60s and then in the 90s. Let's move around. We'll move into some of the other museum collection in a minute. Randomly, there is a Ford Puma here. It's Which the one? best car by far. Pumas are very good. I'm not saying it's the best car, but it's a very good car. Another 75. This is one of the very, very late ones with a much simplified badge. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, child. Lovely colour. Recently red? No, it's not that. Interesting how the wheels are now simple silver badges rather than colour and stuff. This is not a Rover. This snuck in a minute ago. It's non Rover. Which is, do we have a clue what the engine is? It's a V12. Ooh. Do love a V12 while there's still petrol in the ground. This one is a 90. Beautiful two tone colour scheme. Lovely condition as well. This was whispered past us a minute ago. P4s are amazing. It's a standard coin on its edge on the engine when it's running kind of car. That timber would put a stately home to shame. Now, so we're around the outer edges of the. The room, the LDV is, is here. Practical, got a kitchen, make a cup of tea, love that. That's a good one. Another late 75, interesting. Again, with the uh, simplified badge. i have never a big fan of the simplified badge. But it's proclaiming its Rover Sports Register allegiances, which is a good thing. Now check out the difference in the tails of these two cars. This is non-Rover Triumph, little TR, TR4, sorry, I was gonna say three then. It's got EFI on it, wow, that's interesting. This, though, is enormous. A Buick Invicta. American and massive. 60s XS at its finest. Check out these tail lights. The slim pillars sweeping rocket age into this floating roof. This will be a frameless, uh, pillarless window when that winds down in the back as well. And check out the metallic interior. These interiors on American cars in the 60s are just phenomenal metallic seats. I mean, come on, we need more of that in our lives. Look at the black interiors we get today. This is just epic. Speed holes. Back into Rovers again. Now we have a 75. I can't tell what year it is. Next to a 16. Well used, well loved. The seats are totally original, a bit worn, but that's patina, that's age, that's showing the thing is actually being used. This is the least roverish vehicle here in the show today, but it does have a kettle, which makes me very happy. <laughs> Part next to a car which will be featuring on the channel in due course as soon as I can get up to meet the owner and take it for a drive. This is, I think it might be daily driven as well. This is utterly original. Um, it's basically pulled from a shed or a something and pressed into service. This thing is amazing. It wears its age and its battle scars with pride. It's a magical thing. Next to it, a very, very, very nice indeed P5. Three and a half litre. Very, very lovely indeed. I need one of these cars in my garage before too long.
beautiful cars. Aggressive and stylish at the same time. Less aggressive, more stylish. Very gold, this one. Another 75. This is a 2004 example. So before we lost the nice badge. Next to a 45. I wonder what engine this one has. X-plate. Green metallic with a green interior. They did love a good interior, didn't they? No claw in the back, so I'm guessing it's a 1.8. This is another Series 1 P6 next to... Oh, wow. I was going to get excited about the fact that that's a 2000 TC, but this there's metallic paint on this is absolutely beautiful. This is a Series 2 V8, but someone has painted this in a dark metallic graphite grey, which looks absolutely the bomb. It's amazing. I thought mine looked good in matte black, solid black, but this looks just the best. I might have to repaint my car. Oops, I have. A memorial here. They shall not grow old and all that. Which is nice to see. Now we're very strongly into P6 heaven. We have a V8, a V8, a V8, a V8. God, V8s are boring, they're everywhere. <laughs> a Series 1 V8. How many V8s do you need? <laughs> and then another late 75. So 75s and P6s seem to be the order of the day today. Oh, a TC, a 2200 TC. Now I would often say the 2200 TC is actually the pick of the P6 litter because it's got the fast revving of the four cylinder, but almost as much grunt as the V8 and better fuel economy. So this is probably the one to have. But because for many years they fell outside the 40 year free tax thing, they are the, one of the rarest P6s as well, which is a real shame. Now, a couple more 1940s, 50s cars. Urgh. Is that the Queen's car? Might be. Probably not. What are these? Let's have a quick look. Can't see on this one because it's got the radiator muff, a genuine original radiator muff, showing the Viking very proudly indeed. This one, though, which is a very similar car, is a 14. Beautiful cars. Very, very elegant indeed. Now, a few more non-rovers before we head into the museum. The little Wolseley with the light-up grill badge, I assume. A Thunderbird, which is for sale if you want a Thunderbird. <laughs> My son says, let's get a Thunderbird. Probably got nowhere to park that. Another 45. And this one is absolutely amazing. This is an Austin Somerset, which has been roof chopped, which is one of the rarest things you will ever see from a lead sled style on an Austin. Beautiful, beautiful little car. Actually in Custom Car Magazine, a couple months ago, if I'm going to find a look at that. Now we go really, really early. A 1929 Rover 1025, which obviously I knew that without reading. Lovely thing. From the days of temperature gauge on the grill. Lovely thing. And finally, the last Rover is this Rover 10. A more modern version of Rover 10 than that Rover 10. I'm not going to be busted, we're going to take a look at the bus in a second. This is extremely nice. Something, again, I'd love to have in the garage. A pre or early post war Rover would be a wonderful thing to own. Now, swiftly slipping over here, we have got a Routemaster. Apparently, it's one of the few with its original running gear and engine remaining in it. The classic London red bus. Can we see inside the cab? Yes, we can. On the buses, summer holiday, etc., etc. Check out the size of those wheels. What size is that tyre? We see a 920, so it's 20 inch rim. Monstrous tyre. Please let the bus go first. Very, very nice indeed. We're quite enjoying the bus. Back tomorrow, though. <laughs> <laughs> if you are on, in the Essex area around Enfield, it's definitely worth paying a visit to Whitewebs, even when there's not an I event on. Your favorite? The Furious Junior's five personal favourite is this little Morris Commercial Ambulance. Amb that's a bus. It was built as a fire utility and converted to an ambulance later on, apparently. And this is a surprising find. You might not be excited to see this K-plate Nissan truck, but when was the last time you saw a K-plate Nissan truck of any variety, let alone a fire engine Nissan? I'm guessing never. Probably the Ford next to it is more common. In fact, definitely it's more common. 
MG, all part of the collection. It's an interesting collection of cars which they own, and also some vehicles are loaned and stored here. So you never really know what you're going to find, and they do mix it around quite a lot throughout the year. Another Morris commercial, this one being a wrecker. Bedford uh, CA, I think. Minivan, 1980. And a good place for a nap, under your Austin 7. Now, big stuff in the corner. 1919 Leyland, big old thing. And this, let's move back so you can see it. A green goddess, the stalwart of the army's fire defences for many, many, many years. They're finally retired, I think about 12 miles an hour. But, very recognisable. And if you're into vintage signage, there's plenty of it around here as well. This is a really fascinating museum to lurk through. There's a fire engine exhibit in this corner here. Every corner is something different. 1912 bell size, apparently. Look at this engine! It's a monster! What a thing! In the days when Hugh Pew Barney McGrew would wheel this off the back and run up to where they needed to go. And this is a horse-drawn effort. Steam-powered, wow. I remember all we had was steam-powered horses. That's a steam-powered horse. Getting slightly more modern. We have a Dennis. 1970. Don't think of 1970 as that long ago, but it does look really quite dated. It looks kind of 1960s-ish, really. I don't know much about the F56A fire plants narrow truck. I'll be honest. Well, we can get in this one, though. Four, four guys sat in the back. Two in the front. This one's quite interesting. It's even got a Narda scoop bonnet and uh, I mean... No, they're not Denovos, are they? And it's got the Lucas dipping mirror. This one's got all the toys. Oh, the estate leaves, the Astora. Goodbye Astora, I think it's a chance to look around that one. Not something you see on a P6 very often at all. A final latecomer here, this P6, it's a standard 3.5 V8, but the exhaust is different, and wow, does it sound good. But check out the ride height on this thing. It's so good, lowered. You never see a lowered P6. Well, we've done our best to support the museum by buying a 37 Chevy for the child and a Fiat 131 police car for me. And this. And uh, done some typing on vintage typewriters. It's a really, really good museum. There's loads to do here, lots to see. Three or four stories of stuff motorbikes, cars, bicycles, war, and life on the home front stuff. It's amazing. Typewriting stuff, which you wouldn't think would be fun, but turns out is a huge fun game to play. So, yeah, it's been a good day. It's not the busiest I've seen this show, but it's also not the quietest either. So, it's great to be back. Things again. Apparently, this is one of the few car shows that was uninterrupted by COVID over the last couple of years because. Covid restrictions happened after the between other ones. The museum itself was shut last year, but the show still happened out here. So, but it's great to be back for me to be back here again. Great for the coupe to be at a show again for the first time in a long time as well. So, I hope you enjoyed the little walk around, and we'll see you again next time. Like, subscribe, blah blah blah. blah. See you later. Bye. Bye. -bye.